On September 4, 2016, Antipope Francis solemnly, quote, canonized Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Although this will be shocking to people who are uninformed about Catholic teaching and the current situation, it's a fact that Mother Teresa was not a true Catholic. She was actually a notorious proponent of the condemned heresy of religious indifferentism. Mother Teresa's beliefs about God, non-Catholic religions, and salvation were contrary to Catholic teaching, as we will see. Indeed, they were completely incompatible with belief in Jesus Christ and a possession of the Catholic faith. Here are some facts about what Mother Teresa believed and practiced. Many of these are from her book, A Simple Path. The book contains her words and was approved by her. On page 31, Mother Teresa states, quote, I've always said we should help a Hindu become a better Hindu, a Muslim become a better Muslim, a Catholic become a better Catholic, end quote. This is apostasy from the Catholic faith. Based on scripture and apostolic tradition, the Catholic Church teaches that non-Christian religions are of the devil, and that those who follow those false religions will not be saved. People need to be converted to the true faith of Christ, the Catholic faith, in order to be saved. Mother Teresa did not hold that people must accept Jesus Christ and the Catholic faith to attain goodness, sanctification, and salvation. No, she encouraged people to remain members of demonic false religions, including pagan religions that worship idols and false gods. That is a rejection of Jesus Christ and the gospel. It is, in fact, totally demonic. Here's what the Catholic Church teaches. Pope Paul III, quote, Man, according to the testimony of the sacred scriptures, has been created to enjoy eternal life and happiness, which none may obtain save through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, end quote. As the apostolic father St. Polycarp said, Everyone who does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is an antichrist. Whoever does not confess the testimony of the cross is of the devil. And whoever perverts the saying of the Lord for his own desires and says that there is neither resurrection nor judgment, such a one is the firstborn of Satan. The Council of Trent. So unless they were born again in Christ, they never would be justified. It also declared, Our Catholic faith, without which it is impossible to please God. Hebrews 11.6 The First Vatican Council. This true Catholic faith, outside of which no one can be saved. Pope Innocent III defined as a dogma. There is indeed one universal church of the faithful, outside of which no one at all is saved. Pope Eugene IV, the Council of Florence. But it is also necessary for eternal salvation that he faithfully believe in the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pope Pius VIII. Against these experienced sophists, the people must be taught that the profession of the Catholic faith is uniquely true, as the Apostle proclaims, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Indeed, no other name than the name of Jesus is given to men by which they may be saved. He who believes shall be saved, he who does not believe shall be condemned. Pope Gregory XVI, with the admonition of the Apostle that there is one God, one faith, one baptism, may those fear who contrive the notion that the safe harbor of salvation is open to persons of any religion whatever. They should consider the testimony of Christ himself that those who are not with Christ are against him, and that they disperse unhappily who do not gather with him. Therefore, without a doubt, they will perish forever, unless they hold the Catholic faith whole and inviolate. Pope Gregory XVI, quoting Pope St. Gregory the Great, also declared concerning the dogma, outside the church there is no salvation, quote, The holy universal church teaches that it is not possible to worship God truly except in her, and asserts that all who are outside of her will not be saved. Official acts of the church proclaim the same dogma. Pope Eugene IV defined ex cathedra. The Holy Roman Church firmly believes, professes, and preaches that all those who are outside the Catholic Church, not only pagans, but also Jews or heretics and schismatics, cannot share an eternal life and will go into the everlasting fire which was prepared for the devil and his angels, unless they are joined to the Church before the end of their lives, and that nobody can be saved, no matter how much he has given away in alms, and even if he has shed blood in the name of Christ, unless he has persevered in the bosom and unity of the Catholic Church. That's the teaching of the Catholic Church, which Mother Teresa totally rejected. Here are some more quotes in which Mother Teresa expressed her heresy and apostasy. In a 1989 Time magazine interview, Mother Teresa actually said, quote, I love all religions. That is total apostasy and utterly demonic. It is to say that you love lies, sin, the rejection of Christ, and idolatry, among other things. It's also noteworthy that this demonic statement from Mother Teresa that she loves all religions came in response to a question specifically about Hinduism. Hinduism is an idolatrous and pagan false religion, and its many false gods are, as we've seen, devils. It leads to damnation. Mother Teresa loved it, and thus loved the worship of devils. In fact, she mentioned the pagan religion of Hinduism frequently in a positive way, as we will see. It's interesting to consider what Pope Leo XIII said specifically about Hinduism. In the context of mentioning how the Apostle St. Thomas and the great Jesuit missionary St. Francis Xavier converted multitudes from the demonic false religion of Hinduism, Pope Leo XIII referred to the, quote, myths and vile superstitions of the Brahmins and referred to Hinduism's followers as, quote, miserably imprisoned in the darkness of superstition. 
So, Mother Teresa loved idolatry, paganism, the worship of devils, and vile superstitions that keep people imprisoned in darkness, as well as loving the lies and abominations of Islam and all other false religions. The official statement released by the postulator for her cause also admits that Mother Teresa respected every person, including atheists or agnostics, and respected the faith they had or even lacked. That is heresy as we will see. The statement also quotes a Hindu who knew Mother Teresa for 23 years. The Hindu says that Mother Teresa never tried to convert anyone to Catholicism slash Christianity, and that she promoted the following. I convert you to be a better Hindu, or a better Muslim, or a better Protestant, or a better Catholic, or a better Parsi, or a better Sikh, or a better Buddhist. As we've shown, that is heresy and apostasy. It is diabolical. To further express how she didn't try to convert anyone, but wanted pagans to be pagans, etc., Mother Teresa said, We try not to preach religion. Pope Leo XIII taught, You are not to be looked upon as holding the true Catholic faith if you do not teach that the faith of Rome is to be held. Mother Teresa did not hold that belief in Jesus Christ and the faith of Rome is to be held. She did not hold the true Catholic faith, period. It should also be noted that the constitutions of the, quote, missionaries of charity, Mother Teresa's order, state, quote, We shall not impose our Catholic faith on anyone, but have profound respect for all religions. Respecting all religions or false religions is a tenet of Freemasonry and a condemned heresy. As Pope Leo XIII taught, every familiarity should be avoided not only with those impious libertines who openly promote the character of the Masonic sect, but also with those who hide under the mask of universal tolerance, respect for all religions. On page 122 of A Simple Path, Mother Teresa says about those who come to them, quote, The sisters try and find out what religion they are, too, so that when they die they can have the appropriate burial. The Catholics go to the cemetery, the Muslims to the Muslim burial place, and the Hindus to the burning ghat, which is very close to us. The majority of people who come to us are Hindus, so if we don't know the religion, we usually give them a Hindu burial, end quote. It's a mortal sin against faith and an act of apostasy to give people a Hindu or a Muslim burial. The heretical sisters of Mother Teresa's order don't find out what religion people are in order to try to convert them to Christ and his true faith. No, they do so in order to give them a burial according to whatever false religion they believed in. That is apostasy. Mother Teresa and the members of her order would even help Hindus and Muslims who were still alive but dying receive rites according to their false religion. That would include providing water from the Ganges River for the lips of the dying Hindus and readings from the Koran for the dying Muslims. That is a total rejection of Christ and utterly diabolical. Such acts also maliciously confirm the pagans and infidels on their path to damnation. In fact, in Hinduism, the Ganges River is considered to be a divine personification of the Hindu, quote, goddess Ganga. The Hindus worship the Ganges River. So, by providing the Hindus with the waters they worship for their religious rites at death, Mother Teresa and her apostate sisters directly participated in idolatry and the worship of a false pagan god. Quote, there were times when Mother Teresa transported people in dire need in a workman's wheelbarrow. Those who were beyond treatment were given the opportunity to die with dignity, having received the rituals of their faith. For Hindus, water from the Ganges on their lips. For Muslims, readings from the Koran. For the rare Christian, the last rites. End quote. Catherine Spink, Mother Teresa, an authorized biography, pages 54 to 55. On page 31 of A Simple Path, Mother Teresa quotes a member of her order to explain how they pray with members of different religions. The passage also explains how they conduct readings. Sometimes the readings are from the Bible, and sometimes they are from, quote, other scriptures. Quote, we have among us 475 souls, 30 families are Catholics, and the rest are all Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, all different religions. But they all come to our prayers. At 7 o'clock, everyone assembles for 30 minutes, and we have readings, some Bible, and other scriptures. Any book can be read. A patient sometimes will give a small oration. I have never found a problem with people from different religions praying together, end quote. That is syncretism and immortal sin. It is explicitly condemned in Catholic teaching to participate in non-Catholic worship or assemblies. This is, of course, especially true with people who worship the false gods of paganism. Mother Teresa not only endorsed praying with such idolaters and infidels, but allowed them to preach and read their false scriptures. On page 43, Mother Teresa said, quote, There are so many religions, and each one has its different ways of following God. End quote. No, the only way to God is through Jesus Christ and the church he established, the Catholic Church. On page 19, she says, quote, Whatever religion we are, we must pray together, end quote. This is once again to encourage people of pagan religions to pray to their false gods. On page 93, Mother Teresa says this about homosexuals, quote, People often ask me what I think about homosexuals, for example, and I always answer that I don't judge people, end quote. This is an endorsement of mortal sin and another expression of her apostasy.
It also demonstrates that by holding that people can follow God and be saved in false religions, Mother Teresa necessarily held that people can be saved committing all kinds of mortal sins in the area of morals, for many of the religions she endorsed as paths to God allow evils such as contraception, various sexual sins, etc. She therefore believed and taught that Jesus Christ's teaching on marriage and morality was of no consequence. She promoted a false gospel. On page 117, Mother Teresa mentions that at one of her centers there is actually a statue of the Hindu Gandhi, a man who is a pagan and an idolater. Mother Teresa says, quote, We have a wonderful center called Gandhi G. Prem Nivas. Just inside the inner courtyard is a statue of Gandhi, end quote. This is also an image of Mother Teresa venerating Gandhi, a pagan and an idolater who rejected Jesus Christ. Venerating Gandhi and featuring a statue of him are acts of apostasy without any doubt. St. Thomas taught that if anyone were to worship at the tomb of Muhammad, he would be deemed an apostate. Mother Teresa's actions, just on this one point, not to mention all of her other clearly heretical and apostate statements, are the equivalent. This is a picture of Mother Teresa worshipping Buddha on October 7, 1975, during a ceremony for the 25th anniversary of her order. Those Silver Jubilee or 25th anniversary, quote, celebrations for her order went on for a month. They included the following, quote, Prayers were offered with the Muslims, the Sikhs, the Parsis, and the Jains. At the conclusion of a service held in the Buddhist temple, the head monk of the Mahabadi Society presented Mother Teresa with two electric candles symbolizing her work, which he said would burn forever. In the Jewish synagogue, Mother Teresa was afforded the singular privilege of entering the, quote, Holy of Holies. Mother Teresa looked on all the prayers that were offered throughout the world as the best gift to God, end quote. At this point, a quote from the Council of Elvira in 305 is interesting to consider. Even though Elvira was just a regional council and the statement about communion in this passage was just a disciplinary measure, the passage reflects the faith of the Catholic Church on the evil of paganism and idolatry. Quote, It has been decreed that those who in adult age after receiving baptism shall go into the pagan temples to worship idols, which is a deadly crime and the height of wickedness, shall not be admitted to communion even at death. In her 1978 letter to the Prime Minister of India, Mother Teresa wrote, quote, You call him Ishwar, some call him Allah, some simply God, but we all have to acknowledge that it is he who made us for greater things to love and to be loved, end quote. So, she identifies the false Hindu god Ishwar and the false god of the Muslims as God. That further proves that she was not a Christian, but an idolater and an apostate who confused the true god with false gods and demons. Mother Teresa, in authorized biography, also says that, quote, the president of Albania actually asked her to open six churches previously used for secular purposes. This she did and promptly insisted on reopening a mosque for the Muslims also, end quote. The apostate sisters of Mother Teresa's order also swept and cleaned the mosque to prepare it for the Muslims' false worship. Pope Eugene IV described Islam as the abominable sect of Muhammad. Pope Calixtus III referred to it as the diabolical sect of the reprobate and faithless Muhammad. He declared its followers to be pagans. Pope Clement V referred to Muslim rites in mosques as a disgrace and sacrilegious. He said that the public invocation of the sacrilegious name of the infidel Muhammad brings great scandal and displeases the divine majesty, and that it should be expressly forbidden under a pressing obligation of the divine judgment. Pope Pius II referred to Islamic rites as Mohammedan abominations. The book A Simple Path also reveals that in Calcutta, at the Missionaries of Charity Home for TB, there is a life-size statue of Mary that has, quote, an Indian face, wears an Indian tunic, and is held at her feet by a huge pink lotus blossom, end quote. The lotus flower is an important symbol in the pagan religions of Buddhism and Hinduism. So Mother Teresa's order, the, quote, Missionaries of Charity, incorporates a religious symbol of paganism. That is demonic. Their use of this symbol is an expression of the idolatry they learned from the apostate Mother Teresa and the Vatican II sect, the end times counterchurch, that is, the Whore of Babylon. Mother Teresa also sometimes sent her sisters to a retreat at the place of this man, Bede Griffiths, an apostate, quote, Benedictine monk who basically tried to amalgamate Christianity and Hinduism. Griffiths even used Hindu, quote, scriptures as part of his so-called worship. Quote, Mother Teresa sometimes sent her sisters there for brief retreats, end quote. On page 55 of A Simple Path, Mother Teresa says, quote, Unborn children are among the poorest of the poor. They are so close to God. End quote. That statement contradicts the dogma defined by the Council of Florence that until they are baptized, children are not close to God but under the dominion of the devil as a result of original sin. It's a defined dogma that children and others cannot be saved without water baptism. But a heretic such as Mother Teresa did not believe that. On the same page, Mother Teresa says, quote, we teach natural family planning to the poor in our many centers around the world, end quote. 
Mother Teresa would even boast about how many children she prevented from being born through natural family planning. That is evil. As our video NFPA Birth Control Deception shows, natural family planning is a sinful birth control practice that is contrary to Catholic teaching on the primary purpose of the conjugal act. It is not permitted for Catholics even though the Vatican II sect, the End Times Counterchurch, of course endorses it, and the sinful birth control practice of NFP was being promoted in fallible sources even in the years before Vatican II, during the growing modernism of the 20th century. On page 8 and 59, Mother Teresa teaches the false doctrine that God is the father of all men and that all are the children of God, including pagans. Quote, He is father to us all, whatever religion we are. We are all created by God. We are his children. And, God is not separate from the church as he is everywhere and in everything, and we are all his children, Hindu, Muslim, or Christian. End quote. This is heresy. One only becomes a child of God through Jesus Christ and his one true faith. And that entrance into the faith through which one becomes a child of God happens in baptism. Here are a few quotes to refute Mother Teresa's heresy. 1 John 2.23 No one who denies the Son has the Father. John 1.12 But to all who did receive him who believed in his name, to them he gave the right to become children of God. Pope Leo XII, he who hears you hears me, and he who despises you despises me. St. Augustine says, Whoever is without the church will not be counted among the sons, and whoever does not want to have the church as mother will not have God as father. The same Pope taught, It is impossible for the most true God, who is truth itself, the best, the wisest provider, and the rewarder of good men, to approve all sects which profess false teachings that are often inconsistent with one another and contradictory, and to confer eternal rewards on their members. By divine faith we hold one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and that no other name under heaven is given to men except the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in which we must be saved. This is why we profess that there is no salvation outside the church. As we can see, Mother Teresa was a notorious heretic who blatantly rejected Catholic dogma on the necessity of Jesus Christ and the Catholic faith for salvation, and she denied the church's teaching on the evil of other religions. Indeed, she was an epic apostate and promoter of religious indifferentism of the worst kind. She held that there is no necessity whatsoever to believe in Jesus Christ and reject false religions. In fact, in her book, when she recommended or mentioned certain Catholic-slash-Christian prayers, she also mentioned that people can use non-Christian prayers if they don't believe in Christianity. For example, on page 35, the epic apostate Mother Teresa encouraged people to remove the name of Jesus from prayers if they don't believe in him. Quote, The following are prayers that we say every day from our prayer book. You could replace Jesus by God if you are not a Christian. End quote. Mother Teresa held that one can go to God without Jesus Christ. That is Antichrist. 1 John 4, 3. Every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. 1 John 5, 12. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. John 3, 36. He who disobeys the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. John 8, 24. For unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. John 14, 6. Jesus said to them, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Matthew 18, 17. And if he refuses to listen to the church, let him be to you as a heathen and a publican. Mother Teresa in Authorized Biography also cites Mother Teresa as saying, quote, We never try to make those who receive aid become converted to Christianity. End quote. To reject even one dogma is a mortal sin. It results in automatic expulsion from the Church of Christ and the loss of all divine faith. Sadly, as these facts prove without any doubt, Mother Teresa was not a true believer but a demonic unbeliever. We wish she had been different, but that's what she was. She was an apostate from Jesus Christ and Catholicism. She was a demonic woman and a major false prophet for the Vatican II sect, the End Times Counterchurch. In fact, with her religious indifferentism and endorsement of idolatry, she served as a fitting symbol of false holiness for a counterchurch whose false ecumenism and religious indifferentism are the hallmarks of its apostasy. She was loved by the world and by unbelievers all over the world precisely because she was a false prophet. Quote, Some more accustomed to the Hindu mode of thinking chose to see in her the reincarnation of Jesus. Muslims acclaimed her as an evolved spirit, and people of all religious beliefs and denominations were prepared to recognize her as a holy person. In the words of India's President Giri, Mother Teresa was among those emancipated souls who have transcended all barriers of race, religion, creed, and nation. End quote. Luke 6.26 Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. John 15, 18-19 If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. It is impossible for someone who believes what Mother Teresa did to be holy. It is certain that she was wicked, unholy, and in a state of mortal sin. 
Yes, she fed people's bodies, but she deprived their souls and her own of what is most important and necessary, the true faith and the knowledge necessary for salvation. In that way, she was not their true friend, but their enemy, as she confirmed multitudes on the path to eternal damnation through her false gospel of religious indifferentism and respect for false religions. Natural works without the true faith don't profit one unto salvation. Pope Pius XI, the foundation of charity is faith pure and inviolate. Pope Pius X, as a matter of fact, however, merely naturally good acts are only a counterfeit of virtue since they are neither permanent nor sufficient for salvation. And, the primary and most important duty of pastors is to guard everything pertaining to the integral and inviolate maintenance of the Catholic faith, the faith which the Holy Roman Church professes and teaches, without which it is impossible to please God. Concerning rooms in which she would carry out her work, Mother Teresa said, quote, This is a very famous Hindu temple and people used to come there to worship and rest, so I thought that this would be the best place for our people to be able to rest before they went to heaven, so I accepted there and then, end quote. The indication is that she believed everyone is going to heaven, including the Hindus, etc. On page 74 of A Simple Path, Mother Teresa indicates a belief in the heresy that all men go to heaven. She states, quote, When we die, we are going to be with God, and with all those we have known who have gone before us. Our family and our friends will be there waiting for us. Heaven must be a beautiful place, end quote. So much for the teaching that hell exists and that people go there. Contrary to Mother Teresa's heresy, the truth is that most people go to hell. People who die outside the true faith or in mortal sin will not be saved. As Jesus taught, few are saved. Some may ask, how is it possible for such a woman to be, quote, canonized? The answer is that she was not canonized by the Catholic Church and a valid pope. No, she was, quote, canonized by anti-pope Francis and the Vatican II sect, which is the end times counterfeit church, as our material explains. This entire situation was prophesied. On that matter, see our video, Babylon has fallen, fallen, among other things. It must also be emphasized that when, quote, canonizing the apostate Mother Teresa, the heretic anti-pope Francis used the solemn formula of canonization that is basically word-for-word -word identical to the form used before Vatican II. An English translation of the Latin form he used is, quote, for the honor of the Blessed Trinity, the exaltation of the Catholic faith, and the increase of the Christian life, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ and of the holy apostles Peter and Paul and our own. After due deliberation and frequent prayer for divine assistance and having sought the counsel of many of our brother bishops, we declare and define Blessed Teresa of Calcutta to be a saint and we enroll her among the saints, decreeing that she is to be venerated as such by the whole church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. End quote. This formula is of course solemn. It is basically identical to the one used by valid popes before Vatican II. When pronounced by a true pope, it is infallible. Since Mother Teresa was certainly not a saint, but a notorious heretic and an apostate, the use of this formula for her, quote, canonization constitutes more absolute and infallible proof that Francis is not a true pope, but an anti-pope. As the formula says, everyone who accepts anti-pope Francis as the pope must venerate Mother Teresa as a saint, a woman who is a non-Christian apostate. And on this point, don't be misled by certain heretical false traditionalists who assert that the Vatican II sect has valid popes but invalid canonizations because the process that precedes the declaration of canonization has been slightly modified in the post-Vatican II period. That argument is totally fallacious. As those who actually believe in Catholic teaching and papal infallibility know, the process that precedes a canonization has no bearing on the infallibility of the solemn declaration itself. God protects the solemn act of a true pope on such a matter. Even if the process that precedes the declaration were drastically changed or abolished altogether, it wouldn't make any difference. When a true pope pronounces the solemn formula, regardless of the study or investigation that preceded it, he is protected by God from making a false declaration. That's papal infallibility. That's what it means and guarantees. Many false traditionalists, such as the Society of St. Pius X and similar groups, reject this because they don't actually believe in the papacy and papal infallibility. So, there is no way to say that Francis is a true pope and simultaneously reject his solemn, quote, canonizations without denying Catholic teaching and principles. The man who would later become Pope Benedict XIV stated the following in his work on beatification and canonization, quote, If anyone dared to assert that the pontiff had erred in this or that canonization, we shall say that he is, if not a heretic, at least temerarious, a giver of scandal to the whole church, an insulter of the saints, a favorer of those heretics who deny the church's authority in canonizing saints, savoring of heresy by giving unbelievers an occasion to mock the faithful, the asserter of an erroneous opinion, and liable to very grave penalties, end quote. St. Alphonsus also said, quote, to suppose that the church can err in canonizing is a sin or is heresy, 
according to St. Bonaventure, Bellarmine, and others, or at least next door to heresy, according to Suarez, Azorius, Gotti, etc. Because the sovereign pontiff, according to St. Thomas, is guided by the infallible influence of the Holy Ghost in a special way when canonizing saints, end quote. Since Antipope Francis's solemn act of, quote, canonization was obviously not protected from error, it proves that he is not a true pope. Of course, all of Francis's acts are invalid because he's a notoriously heretical antipope. The false canonization of the demonic woman and epic apostate Mother Teresa is another sign of the apocalyptic takeover of the city of Rome during the Great Apostasy. It is causing many who claim to be Catholic to believe that religious indifferentism, indeed an endorsement of paganism and idolatry, leads to heaven and holiness, when it actually leads to damnation. Also, note that this act of apostasy took place at St. Peter's Basilica. It was broadcast and projected to the world from that spot. That's because St. Peter's Basilica is the temple of God which has been taken over in the final apostasy in accord with prophecy as our material covers. Further, even if one, for the sake of argument, were to prescind from principles of papal infallibility when considering the significance of Mother Teresa's quote canonization, the act would still prove by itself that the Vatican II sect is not the Catholic Church, but rather a pack of unbelievers, heretics, and apostates. That's because, as we've shown, Mother Teresa was not a Christian. The woman was some kind of non-Christian pagan hybrid who claimed to accept elements of Christianity, but she was definitely not a Christian. Any group which, after examining her life, considers that non-Christian to have even been saved, when she gave no evidence of conversion to the true faith, let alone considers her to have been a, quote, saint, is a false church. It is a pack of unbelievers. It is not the Catholic Church, which is the one true church, not of heretics. Pope Innocent III. By the heart we believe and by the mouth we confess the one church, not of heretics, but the holy Roman Catholic and apostolic church, outside of which we believe that no one is saved. Those who accept the non-Christian and notorious apostate Mother Teresa as a saint in the face of the facts are heretics. And, as we've seen, rejecting her false, quote, canonization, as one must, necessarily requires recognizing the truth that her fellow apostate Francis is a non-Catholic antipope and that the Vatican II sect is not the Catholic Church. The Vatican II sect is, in fact, the prophesied end times counterchurch, and the apocalyptic prophecies about it have been fulfilled before our eyes, as our material shows. In this vein, it's revealing to consider the comments of one false traditionalist organization named The Remnant on this matter. After Mother Teresa's, quote, canonization, while noting her, quote, modernism, the remnant nevertheless described her as, quote, saintly, quote, holy, and, quote, courageous. That is demonic. People who take such position in the face of the facts, as they do, are wicked and faithless unbelievers. The same false traditionalist organization posted an audio clip from a heretical so-called priest they promote. He expressed his, quote, admiration for Mother Teresa, and even described the non-Christian apostate as a, quote, saint. The Church canonized Mother Teresa, Mother Teresa of Calcutta. I must admit a feeling a certain affection for her, and in many ways an admiration of her. And so the next morning I offered Mass for her Sisters of Charity, but Mother Teresa was not present. Still, I was impressed with their, their piety, their devotion. There is much that is commendable and admirable about Mother Teresa. And this is not by way of criticism of a saint. They are not of God, but of the devil. They are not Catholics, but heretics. They reject the Catholic faith. They are false teachers who lead people into heresy and hell by, among other things, keeping them in the counter church. They lead people to believe that they can be truly, quote, traditional or conservative in the Vatican II sect when that's not the case. Those sentiments also reveal that the obstinate adherents of the Vatican II counterchurch, including the so-called traditionalists, continue to recognize the apostate antipopes in the face of the facts precisely because they have no faith. They don't believe in Jesus Christ, they aren't faithful to Catholic teaching, and they don't reject heresy and heretics. We were also emailed by a woman who informed us that two priests of the heretical CMRI told her to pray for the repose of Mother Teresa's soul as if a notorious apostate and non-Christian such as Mother Teresa could have been saved without conversion to the true faith. That is diabolical. It's another striking example of the faithlessness and heresy of the false traditionalist groups such as the CMRI, which deny the Church's dogmatic teaching on the necessity of the Catholic faith and baptism for salvation. Other false traditionalists endeavor to escape these conclusions by claiming that a canonization simply means that a person is saved or in heaven, but it is not an endorsement of the person's life 
as if it were acceptable to believe that the apostate Mother Teresa is in heaven. The argument is totally false, however. As Pope Pius XI taught, saints will always be, quote, models for every class and profession, for every state and condition of life, end quote. A canonization not only means that the person is saved, but that the person was a model of faith and a proper way to live during his or her life as a Catholic. If the person converted late in life, the person was a model of faith and a proper way to live during the period following the conversion. Since Mother Teresa was, quote, canonized for her life and work as a religious, her, quote, canonization was a solemn statement by the Vatican II sect that what she displayed and believed during her career with the, quote, missionaries of charity is a model of faith and morals that can be followed to attain holiness and salvation, when in fact it was an example of demonic heresy, indifferentism, and apostasy. Thus, there is no way for adherents of the Vatican II antipopes to escape the significance of the, quote, canonization of a notorious heretic and demonic apostate like Mother Teresa. Such an act certainly proves that the Vatican II sect is not the Catholic Church and that Francis is an antipope, even though that fact has already been proven many times. Since Mother Teresa gave no evidence in the external forum of having abandoned her apostasy and converted to the Catholic faith, not only can she not be considered a saint, no one can hold that Mother Teresa is in heaven or even pray for her. She is to be considered as having died as an unbeliever and outside the Catholic Church, which is what she was during her life. See our material for more information about how what's happening in Rome now was prophesied. The Vatican II sect is not the Catholic Church, but the prophesied end times counterchurch. See how the fulfillment of these prophecies in Rome proves that the Catholic Church is the one true Church of Jesus Christ, outside of which there is no salvation.